Hey gamers, today we're going to look at the expansion for Grand Austria Hotel. Let's waltz. Let's check it out. All right, a lot to talk about here, but I want to talk about this upgrade pack. Uh, the upgrade pack comes with a few things here, of course, extra pieces with champagne bottles, which is what you'll be using now. This is an upgrade from the uh, cubes. You have wine bottles, cake, strudel, and black coffee bits there, which are really nice. It does come with these little things to track your money. You just put this on your next to your board there if you just want to track your money on it. I never play with that. They also have one of these, but this is also in the expansion as well, so I don't know why they gave you one in the upgrade box. So now I have two. Uh, they also have things for, you know, whenever you claim one of those uh, goals throughout the game, you get these little markers. These little safes here are for money, and this little clock here is for the round there. That's, the, that's what's in the deluxe upgrade. Now, in the regular expansion, you're going to have a lot of neat little things like extra workers, ex tons of extra guests, and they reprinted all the original guests, even the promos under the new icons there. So this all came, some of this came with the upgrade set, I believe too, but uh, really nice stuff. All this stuff, and a bunch of this stuff all falls in with the newest expansion. It also has, again, there's that tile again. You place this over the board if you're playing with the uh, ballroom edition, because champagne is a new thing you can get. Of course, you may not have any greater cake than champagne. So, for instance, if there were three ones here, I could go one, one, and one. But I couldn't get more champagne than I could cake. Uh, it also has more of these little to Emperor's tokens here, rewards and favors, sometimes dealing with the expansions, just sometimes dealing with other ideas. And then it has a new way to play the game. Instead of the snake concept of going first and last, you can go round and round from one player to the next. Everyone gets even rounds. Uh, there also is a solo mode in this one that I have never played and probably never will. Now, lots of expansions to talk about here. Let me talk about the biggest one. It is the ballroom. Each player is going to get one of these four little things to put on the side it fits on the side of their board here and you put all of your color ballroom dancers these are stickers you have to put on there but you put them all in these areas here once you completely clear as you see each one of these uh, tiles are different but each time you clear one of the sections you will get that reward um, so it goes from easiest, of course, to the hardest, but it's the biggest reward. And you're placing them in one of these ballrooms. Now, there are several ballrooms in the game that will give you different, uh, different points if you, if you score on the top two tiers, as you see here. And then at the end of the round, or certain rounds, it'll score you victory points. Now, the rule book is very simple, and a lot of these are very simple to see. Um, seven times every two you have there. That's pretty nice. But the rule book's going to tell you exactly uh, what each ball room how each one scores and how it works but you're going to choose three of these and you're going to lay them out okay and then after you lay them all out you're going to basically take one of these three tokens here the three the five and the seven and you're going to put them on top of these boards just kind of randomly or over to the side doesn't matter this is a this is a, this expansion makes the game a table hog but anyway that means on the end of the third round when the emperor uh, comes in, you score this ballroom, and then it's out, then that ballroom, then the seventh ballroom. Now, wherever the seventh ballroom is, you are going to add this little balcony token to it, just in case you have extra people wanting to get in to, to this last area and there's no more spaces. That is a free-for-all. It does cost three champagne, but at least you can put people here on the board in the seventh round if you're trying to get rid of some last-minute people. The game also comes with an extra score marker to go to 225, and yes, even 300, even though I've never seen anyone do that yet in our games. There is another expansion where you have these colored die here that represent one of these special guests that you can get into your area, and all them are kind of famous people that give you a one turn, during that turn, you get this bonus. So for every time I get a champagne, I would get a victory point and a, a cube of my color or menu item of my color there. That's every time I get a champagne. It's just for one round only uh, once you claim it. How do you get these? Well, you're going to roll these three die and separate them with the other die on the board. And then as you're choosing them, let's say these were all the ones and that was the four. And these were the only ones left. Now, if there's any white die there, that would be different. But let's say it's that toward the end of the round, there's not many on, there's only these two on one and that on four. If I picked up this four, 
that means I would get to do the action of four, but I would get this yellow one for free. Free, because there were no other dice there. And then I'd score one victory point. Any of these that aren't played would get one of these two victory points put on them, and then if they weren't played again, they'd get a four victory point on them. So they go up in value to make them more uh, um, attractable to the other players. However, if there's two ones here, if I was to pick up this one and I got the blue, I'd have to pay one dollar, because there's one die remaining. And so that's basically how it works, and you only get to use this person's ability for that round. Afterwards, it goes away. Uh, and there's several of them in the deck. Uh, there's several other little famous people here in the deck. The other expansion do does with the new player order, where you just go round robin. Now, if someone picks a one through five, they get to go first, and they can also get a cube of their color, whatever one they want there, and then instantly, second place gets nothing, the new third place gets a dollar, the new fourth place gets two dollars, and first place takes the key. Okay, so remind them they'll be going first the next round. That keeps going like that until someone puts a die there. So just a little extra choice in the game. The other expansion uh, is this one that you basically just put this at the bottom of your board. It gives you some special starting uh, abilities or uh, resources or whatnot or victory points and then it'll give you a special ability during the game. Now each one of these are different but the iconography is kind of easy to understand and if you don't understand anything the rule book is very easy to help you understand which what the what each one of these secret powers do. And basically that is the expansion of Let's Waltz. Real quick I forgot to mention that the game comes with blank uh, cards you can design your own. Now usually I hate this, but they included stickers. And one person, I haven't made these yet, I haven't put these together yet, but look at this. Bernie Sanders, oh yeah, he's definitely gonna be on one of these cards. Final thoughts, what do I think about the expansion? Well, if anyone doesn't know, Grand Oster Hotel has been on my top 10 for like forever. <laughs> and when I saw that they were doing an expansion to it, I didn't read anything about it. I said, done. Done. Funded. Give me it. And then when it came in, I was like, you know what? I really should have read over the rules to see what was in here. And I did. And I loved everything about it. I was like, wow, I cannot wait to play this. And after our first play, we went, huh. And then our second play, we went, ooh. It's not good. I hate to say that because I love Grand Austria Hotel, but the only one that I enjoyed was the special little hotel abilities you can have, the little starters, uh, things, bonus things you start with, and then the extra power you have. That's really the only good one. Uh, sure, the round robin instead of the snake way to play the, the rounds is nice too, but to be honest, no one, no one in all the games we played, no one got that first player. It just wasn't worth it to get one cube of something that you want and it can't be champagne. And that's the other thing. Uh, I'm, we, we're making a new house rule that when it says one of anything, except for champagne, it's gonna always be champagne. Champagne is the hardest thing to get, but you need champagne to put them into the ballroom. But if someone gets that first spot at the bottom, which everyone's gonna get, because they all have one champagne, then there's going to be maybe one or two Walters on the floor. You can't get that many people off your board because there's not enough champagne. There's no way to get champagne. And that kind of sucks when you have an extra And I love that. I love the idea of putting them on the dance floor instead of opening up a room because sometimes you just don't have the rooms. Well, now you pop, a, pop some bubbly and send them onto the dance floor. But champagne, the hardest thing to get. But it's essential to one of the expansions Modules, that's so dumb to me. Um, the other one, and I, ha I hate that I'm hating on each one of these, but the other one, great idea. I have those special one-time guests. You know, you grab that die and you get them for that one turn. And you're really only going to use their power once, if not at all. And it got to be where no one cared about it. They thought it was cool and then everyone realized those are, those are useless powers. So then I said, okay, uh, last time I played, I said, when you grab one of these, you can use it for the next turn. That way, maybe you can use it maybe twice or three times. Who knows? Still. No takers, one or two, but most people when they got it, they just got it because they needed the resource. And if they got that other guy for free, that was fine, but they weren't going to use it. In fact, one guy just kept handing me them back and said, here, I'm not going to use this. No one cared about it. So maybe next time I'll say, okay, it's a permanent power, even though that would make it really powerful, but maybe then people will start caring about those. Again, great concept. It looked great when I read the rules. No one wanted it. Uh, of course, this game leads to uh, analysis paralysis in a big time way, big time way, and uh, so that's another negative about it. And I hate that. I hate that. I love this. I love Grand Austria Hotel. I will continue to play with this to try to drum up some more interest. Like I said, I'm going to make champagne a lot easier to get when you have a cube of any color or any design. You're also going to be able to pick champagne in those instances. Just 
to get some more champagne and then make those special guests permanent abilities. Maybe that will make them more popular. But what use is an expansion if you're not going to use any of the modules? And I hate to say it, I, if these were play tested, they need to go back to the drawing board because it was a big pass. I, the base game is super popular with my uh, friends, with my gaming group. This one, they could deal without it. Anyway, gamers, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, you know what to do. Game on!